Good day and um, welcome to your favourite sport programme on TV Plus Sports. As usual, today will be an interesting moment on the show. I am Mudashi Shitu. We'll be looking at something interesting that has been the talking point in the past um, few um, days. And that's why on this show, whatever is trending on um, social media, on this show, whatever is going around that is worth talking about. That's why we bring in experts to really dissect some of all this topic. And today's topic, we'll be looking at the Nigerian Football Federation, Austin Iguavon, the present interim coach of the Super Eagles and foreign coach, and the call for the foreign coach. So we'll be looking at this to really see whether there's a need for NFF to talk up to being foreign coach or Iguavon, because there have been media reports that um, the two games, Austin Iguavon, ex international, that we know as Cicero, um, that is in charge of the two games, Benin Republic and the game against Rwanda, that is a call from fans to retain him as a coach of um, the Super Eagles. But speaking with me and doing um, a lot of analysis on this topic is um, Dr. Martin Morgan, who is an African sport um, administrator. It's good to have you on the show, Dr. Martin Morgan. Nice to be back again and. Uh Nice talking about the best thing we know how to do. And it's very interesting. You know, we are talking about football and sport generally. It's uh, what hold on, that the, the unity we have, where we have one voice, where it is it's, uh, devoid of partisan uh, uh, affiliations. So once the sport is doing well, all of us are united for one purpose. Yeah, Just exactly like, like you said. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. The, um, the, the, the last time bef be before we spoke, we were in search of a foreign coach. We caught um, one coach from Jami. Um, from there, still now we had um, Iguavon as the interim coach. Between now and then, there's now a call for Iguavon to be retained as um, the substantial coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, the football men's national team. What can you say about this? Is, um, though the NFL hasn't said anything about whether it should be retained or not, what's your opinion? Because it has to do with NFF, Iguavon, or the foreign coach. What's your expert opinion on this? Well, uh, for me, if you look at it, it's uh, like a missed bag reaction. We are putting everything in the same laundry, laundry bag and uh, trying to get all what to be done at the same time. But honestly speaking, NFF have a passion, a greedy passion, of foreign coaches. Mm. Greedy passion for foreign coaches because they serve as a wine, a pipeline, a pipeline for them to be able for the cartel in the NFF to use it as a means of uh, enhancing the self-interest and uh, their own program to the detriment of what football ought to be. With the number of foreign coaches we have had in this country for football, in terms of football, by now, our football status shouldn't have been Mm. where we are, because the administration should have been a, a top-notch. There will have been a continuity of the administration. It's just for us to adapt. But unfortunately, we have not been able to get it because the people in the glass house have various motives mm. of trying to have a foreign coach for the nation in the name of the foreign coach. We, we understand, you and I know, Stezo, Austin and Guavon, apart from being the former captain of the national team, Currently, is the current director, technical, for yes. the NFF in the glass house. We saw what happened. It's always, I think it's always a, a quick fix for NFF, where everything fails. We saw how they smuggle one setting Bruno Labadia from the back door mm. after, the, uh, after the meetings or they had trying to lure uh, Evie Rena, Stenner Fires, and other coaches to come in, and it never worked. Only for us to wake up on one Tuesday that we say the Nigerian coach is Bruno Labade, S. German International. Mm. After three days or two days, on a Thursday, the man said, no, I'm not continuing. The NFL came up with a statement that why the talk failed was because of uh, the double taxation in Germany. And mm. they're not just telling us that this is the first time we're having a German coach. Those are some of these questions we need to ask. But prior to that, they were telling us even in the Paris Olympics that they have been having meetings with top European coaches. Even right now, I've been reliably trying to make to understand that. He said he cannot come in when the administration is not good, though he's handling the French national team, the female French national team. Hmm. So for 
Serenzo Aguaguama, we saw that the last half call in Cameroon two years ago, we saw him that he was in charge as a quick fix also. Mm. And uh, took us to Cameroon. First two matches, okay, fine, fine. It was very okay. But when uh, uh, he was eliminated by Tunisia, we were all calling for his head. That is football fans for you. Mm. The same NFF now came out with another theory. Trying to give us another one, say, fine. Let uh, Serez uh, Zouegouaron came. And I must commend his courage. He's mm. always coming in and take up the responsibility mm. where there's nowhere. Mm. And this is one thing we must encourage him. So if you have such a personality in your food, why not give him that long time and leverage? Why not give him that opportunity? All the good things you want to give to that foreign coach. And mind you, Bruno Labade will have just come and uh, chip in and become a champion in the cheap popularity from these games. Hmm. If I thought he has stayed, I am sure between you and I will be lamenting that why shouldn't I stay and just get a cheap popularity and update my CV? Then you hmm. must give kudos to Celeste, uh, sorry, Augustine, Augustine Bavon. Bavon. for what yes, for what he has done. The patriotism and the so why not give him that time? Give him the chance to go. The long time we are giving, we are intent giving to the white guys. Even if you need he failed, because the timing was short, Finidi was appointed as a bait to make him fail because of the cartel there. And that is what happened. But ironically, Augustine Aguavoin, living with them, staying with them, living with them, literally speaking, is there in that glass house where they don't throw stones, but they are full of throwing stones there. So he knew how the stones were coming, the direction of the stones, and he took it very well and got a result for us at Uyo and a good another result in Kigali. Mm. So based on that, if the players have agreed to play for him and they respect him, which is uh, a backup with the local one with uh, Fidelis and uh, the other one, Gumon, is Gumon the, yeah, and the backup from those ones are with the, the foreign physical trainer. If that chemistry, that formation is working, why do we have to go and search for the black goat in the dark? Hmm. In the name of the foreign coach. You so, don't need it. Yeah. So give him the opportunity and let him move on. Uh, but what do you think is the reason for that um, desire for the Nigerian Football Federation to always want a foreign coach? When over the time they have been proven there are local coaches, ex-internationals. What do you think is the reason? Because it's enough. Because that same result that Iguavon supported by Fidel Izile Chiku and um, also Daniel Ogumodede as the assistant, is enough. It's the same result, probably, that the best foreign coach will probably give to us. That's what I'm saying, that you will have just chip on that cheap popularity and make yourself a, a hero overnight. That so, will have been the same thing. So with two games, yes, we got four points, and we are currently, yes. if not mistaken, on the lock table of that qualifiers. Why do you think yes. NFF continues searching for a foreign coach? And this is something that needs to be studied. Well, the need of searching for a foreign coach is not far. Corruption. Corruption. Pocket of money. Commission. Hmm. Markup. References. Hmm. Satisfying the boys. Those are these elements. And at the same time, internally, they used to have this notion that... Uh, most of our guys playing in Europe or in foreign countries, they don't have regard for our... Uh, I don't like using the word local. Is, 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 is that is true? Is that statement true? It's just an assumption. It may be possible that maybe between the line, you see your former local coach and you say, Kochi, just have this one for your bottle of uh, beer or coke and uh, buy bread for madame. So it will be misinterpreted. We know we give, Nigerian give. But they don't believe that in that one, it can be excessively abused. It's, a, it's there, it's a factor. But they felt that with the foreign coach, hmm. that element would not be there. But they refused to tell us that when Pericero was crying, that the money he's signing on paper is different from what he's getting back. Hmm. They Serious. Refused to check into that. They refused to get into that uh, issue. For me, all of us know uh, Guavon, we know Cerezo, we know Finidi, we know that sport. So, what we intend to do that, if the boys are, a coach become better when the players agree to play for him. Mm. Like what you saw, the tension in the country was so high. 
And uh, what happened in here, uh, Bayara Stadium, Kumasi, we don't want it to happen here because we have a, a, a bitter dose of what happened in Moshida Biola Stadium when Ghana defeated us. But this time, when Angola defeated uh, the Blasters of Ghana, we know what happened in Bayara Stadium. Yes. So we don't want that to go. Honestly, and they were able to take out the cheaters of the Bede Republic hmm. and we were able to send them to the cleaner with uh, Mr. General. So what, 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 what do you think? What, do, what do you think happened in the first leg that we played against um, um, when um, the man called um, ex international Finidi Finidi George, properly known as Finito? What happened in the first game that he? I think we lost. What, what happened? What's the difference between that game that Finidi lost and the game that Iguavo lost? Won. Prior to that game, prior to that game in Abidjan, what happened? You can see that there was a background struggle. Hmm. There were some players who were not happy, and that was orchestrated by NFF. Prior to that game, the whole world we were aware that Emmanuel Amunike is supposed to be the coach of the Super Eagles. was there. All the MMA were very ready about that. Then overnight, and it was agreed that Finidi was to be his assistant. And uh, supported by Daniel Omokachi, hmm. if you remember, taking back to history. So overnight, we saw that there were a lot of uh, how do you call it, maneuverings, which unreliable, caught me, unreliable information. Hmm. There may be factual that it became political, that one big man from that area spoke to another big man uh, for his former club, who were a member of the technical committee, and they agreed. Only one S international said, no, let us follow the right procedure. And it didn't work. I was a member of the technical committee. And they left. Hmm. And I, I, I look at that. My blame also go to Finidi for him to have accepted that position in place of his friend, Emmanuel. But that is all history. So there was that issue now that he had to come up with a group of players. He posed to him that, yes, he must use this certain player to execute this action. Hmm. And he went to Abidjan and they lost hmm. to Benin Republic. Hmm. And a couple of we came back, we saw the ad boss of the center nine, uh, Vito Sime, and we saw the ad boss of what happened to Captain Ekon. Hmm. We saw the ad boss of certain of some of the players who persecuted Akon that were not part of it. Hmm. And we didn't get the result. So, invariably, and they gave Finiti an opportunity to fail in the sense that they put him in a tight corner, they throw a bait at him. And he swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. And the thing caught him on between. That is why he failed. But then, when we rejuvenated, he goes, okay, fine. There was no more coach. I think that when there is confusion like that, it also helped us. Then, mm. Cerezo take over a week to or two weeks to. Mm. Cerezo agreed. And most of the players were invited. 70% of those players were invited and injected the former players that the player themselves need into the team. Mm. And he came in, and in that wisdom, he brought in those who are doing very well in their various clubs in the Continental to assist him. Mm. And that was a very positive one. And those who came to assist him were not the same old wine that we used to know, the like of Boso, Salisu, and Co. Exactly. That we used to know. It's not there. So they brought some new guys, Fidel Iskamara and, and uh, Daniel. So those people injected new because. It's a preparation of a transitional program. Definitely. Because of the football players. Hmm. So that you know them because they have played on that game. So that came with the aura alone gave victory. And the players themselves, the boys decided, ah, at this point in time, we don't need to disappoint. They agree. Sise Aliou, the coach of Senegal, okay. how long has he stayed in that team now? He has so stayed for a long time. Sise Ali, a very long time, more than seven to eight years. And it's getting results. You keep on transiting and changing the players. Why not give a longer program also to our Nigerian coaches or our uh, local coaches? So they have a, the same transitional program. They update their skills and they know what to do. And the boy will start having respect mm. for them. And we start getting positive results. Mm. The management of Nigerian football is what is causing the problem of our... Uh, upward result. Hmm. The people in that uh, NFA, they have overstayed their usefulness in the sense that the, the, we used to have the decree 101. 
But mm. the act of parliament of selecting that commission is faulty. Mm. And I have made it known that the minister need to look at the federations. Mm. The nasty experience we had in the Olympics in Paris was as a result of the federations. Mm. The ineptitude of the federations. Mm. And that thing has also translated to this. And if they want to talk, they will say, FIFA will ban you. CAF will ban you. Mm. International FIFA uh, will ban you. Mm. All those things are stories. Mm. Because as far as the federations are not law independent financially and you fund it, you cannot tell me that you will be banned. Because I want to get the best. Mm. We are not interfering in the football. We are trying to get. The NFF is over bloated. Now, Most now, of the now, people now, don't have job there. Dr. Martin. Uh, Dr. Martin. Well said, your, your, your observation, your analysis on point, very straightforward, like the man you are. But let's, let's, let's not to does Iguavon really deserve emotions apart? Is a Nigerian apart? Is a technical director apart? Looking at two games, four points, giving us hope when we lost it. Now, do you think it deserves to be retained? Looking at it holistically. Holistically, holistically, with the crop of players is not having now, with the possibility of injecting those who are going to come up from his backup assistant without influence, give him five years program. Let him continue with the NFF, with the team. But when he does that, that money, siphoning of that money in the name of foreign contract will not come. This is where the corruption in the NFA will fall back. They have been asking for auditing of the NFF, the National Assembly, and the many years. So they have mm. used their balance sheet. Nothing. So this is where the whole thing lies. Presero, have been been cleared all? Hmm. I don't want to go into that detail. So yeah, yeah, let's, 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 let's <laughs> I would say okay. let, let, let us press what we have here. Yeah, let, let's <laughs> look at what we have here because, you know, there are a lot of um, issues well, that... Well, you know, you know, you know me the way I am now. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So now let's 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 look, let's look at this. Um, Iguavon is going to be or not? But what? Why do you think um, a lot of fans are calling for him to be retained? Apart from the fact that he's the right, he, he has all the knowledge to be there. But why do you think um, the fans, especially because we cannot forget the three games. In the last um, Nations Cup, he took us to Iguavon. We lost in the round of 16, and now people are calling for him to be retained. How good of a man is Iguavon? Well, for me, Iguavon is not the first time, apart from Cameroon. He was in Tunisia. Uh, he has got, I think he has given us a bronze medal before. Yes, yes, he, yes. It's not the first one. I remember the incident in Tunisia there with my late friend Prince Agbama. When they were to give interview and Chuku was to call, I said, so I know Igbo. Hmm. Because the guy was asking the question in French. He said, I speak in Igbo. <laughs> it's funny, we're laughing. But okay. then at the same time, since he has volunteered, he has agreed, he become a willing horse. Hmm. Like a boxer in Animal Farm, a willing horse. Let us give him the opportunity and give him a time frame of five years. That contract you want to give to that white man's skin. I'm not a racist. What is he going to do different hmm. from what Ebuavon is going to do? Like I keep on saying, if Bruno Labad they have not run through the back door, he came in. Hmm. He will probably must have gotten cheap popularity. Just with the natural and others. Popularity. Yeah, cheap popularity, and he would have just rise up his profile for nothing at the detriment of somebody who is there doing the job. Hmm. We can't continue like that. It is but, high but, time. But you want to give applause. And yeah, sorry. I, I need to ask this before we go to the next topic that we're talking about today. Do you think it's a good um, recommendation, a good um, decision, rather, that um, they called um, Fidelity J. Chuku, he was with um, MFM, Enugu Rangers, I think he was with Plateau United, not so sure of that. Yeah. Then uh, Ogun Mother Day, United, yes, yeah, where more, where more stars, been to the um, Continental, and what was it a good add-on? Who did what? What did it was the purpose of that? The the purpose of that is for us to scan the local players in the leagues and see how a transition will come up as a backup. Mm. That is just 
that is just the thinking. There are no things. If you are a tactician or an analyst and you understand this game, it that bias. You understand that is the, that is the essence. Okay. It's a young one. It's mm. a young man. And uh, the two of them really understood. And if you if you watch very well, even throughout the game, you see them putting their heads together because uh, Daniel was also having notes, checking okay. notes, even though they have an analyst. Okay. So it, it, it gives you that understanding that that chemistry can work. Why not try the formula? Okay. Yes, away from that, away from the eighth national, um, away from um, NFF, you go have one foreign coach. Look at that second topic of today, which is um, the eighth national youth games. As we speak, um, several states, 36 most at least, most times it's always more than 30 states we have at the national youth games, um, are in Asaba, the Stephen Keshe Stadium in Asaba for the eighth national youth games. And it's, this is where the future of um like we is expected it to be the future of the Nigerian sport is being selected the best of the best but there's something going on right now and um we're going to hear about that in the report after the discussion is the very fact that um so um the delta state governor and the sport minister are saying that there should be a age shift because if it, under 15th but are saying that it should be under 17th of what purpose is this National Youth Games and has he achieved his purpose? Well, for me, um, the whole idea of a youth game is talent hunt. Okay. How to nurture them. The question I want to ask, the one we did last year and those talents we got, where are they? Where hmm. is the data? That's a very good question. How far have you been able to the progression? No age cheat. Are we now monitoring them? Are we preparing them? Because if you, whether you like it or not, go back to the Olympics. Our Olympic teams, they are aging. They are aging, and there's need for replacement. Hmm. So now, from that age, 15 or 17, is to grab this talent and nurture them and follow them and ensure that the talent plus education Sport plus education goes in pari pursue. Mm. But if we don't succeed in doing that, we will not be able to get what we expect. Though it's going to be on a yearly event, but each talent being gotten, mm. we should be able to have those data secured, mm. follow them in their various schools, in their various states, in locations. Why are we following them? Because the following year, are they really continuing? Is that the age? Is it, are they continuing? Is it a dropout because of academic issue? Is it because they could not afford their school fees, so they couldn't continue their life and their, their school? So these are the things we need. It's not only organizing. They should have been a proper follow-up. Let me tell you, the last Paris Olympics we had, we discovered that 330 medals were won by students from 26 countries across the world. Hmm. The USA NACA universities won more goals. We are representing the United States. They won more goals. What does that tell you? It tells you that the future of sports and the rest, no matter the age, has a very positive factor we need to use to understand that, yes, we need to nurture. Hmm. When we used to have Nuga, Nipoga, secondary school sport, what happened to those athletes? And this is what the NCCA in US, in NACA, are using from the various team, 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 team uh, America, team USA, in the Paris Olympic, they have more undergraduate students than any other one. So, like I'm telling you, 330 medals were won in Paris Olympic from students from 26 countries. I still repeat. Hmm. So, how many of our students made up the team to win? Hmm. Go and check. Is there? The records are there. So, what do we do? So that tells you that initial. So we should go beyond the fanfare, the razzmatazz, the jamboree, hmm. or having the politicians all around surrounding us. You should look at the net. What happened? How are we preparing? Our youth athletes went to Peru. They never even won anything. They didn't perform well. At all. So what happened? What happened to those ones we discovered last year? Did you never put them on the trial to be part of it? So these are the sequences we are trying to look at, uh, Muda. 
So it's not that Jamborin come and give us press statement and no, 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 no. We don't, we are gone past that age. Hmm. We are gone past age. What happened to our Nuga games? What happened to our Nipoga games? Very soon we are going to have another games in Ogun State. What are we doing? So when you prepare this one and you don't nurture them, me, I will not say, okay, if I have opportunity to split up to other countries, they will switch allegiance. I think we have and we to... saw it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure that's worry, something that is worrisome and it's cause for concern. Um, as saw as um, someone that have yeah. covered the National League game several times, um, it's obvious that um, the last three National League games, you probably not see any of them in the national team of any sport in the country. That's what I'm saying. You. That's what it's I'm saying. It's the same you, set of uh, people that have been in the national sports festival, national sports festival, national team are still there. Yeah, national so the question is, the right. no. yes. Another, another, another development that is coming out that we have to be very careful. Our Paralympic just came back. They came back with six or seven medal. Very dismal appearance because they are aging. Hmm. What are we doing? to replace them in the next Olympics that is going to take place in It's the same Canada. set of people that will definitely go. The same set of people and the age is not going. Sport is a game whereby there's an age you get, your body will tell you don't do. You can't continue. And that is why we saw it here. It's not the issue of prayers. Prayer does not win you better. Just like what we saw in Paris. When S.A. Brume was to take you qualified, when the other uh, guy was Mastering the tactician, how to do, how to swing, how to change their position to ring. Our own coaches were telling us, let us pray. They were holding their hand, they were pray, praying inside. I cast you. Who are you casting? Where you don't plan? So you will not win. So these are the things we are talking about. We are getting the talents, nurture them, follow them because they are from various states. What about what are the various state uh, sports commission and education? So that synergy with but, uh, Minister of Education in the state and the federal. Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin, well, well yes. sir, but there's a question that um, why, why do the sport ministers that come just follow the uh, lay down prototype or blue, uh, blueprint without wanting to change? Because the ministry are always the one that um, would definitely benefit from all this um, on standard, on structured um, mechanism. So, but why is that the sport minister doesn't have this plan? Nobody's telling the sport minister, this thing doesn't work. Nobody has been at the national games that are from the youth games on the national team, international event. Or is there a, a separation between the youth games and what we should be expecting outside? Well, I think uh, the, you and I know the rate of pissing and the status quo syndrome as related to bureaucracy in terms of administration. Mm. They're all the same. We, it is high time we make that type of suggestion to look. We need to change these approaches. There's need to change this approach. We need to change our mindset. We should go away from participation. We should go for preparation and we made that. We should go for objective. Look at the Chinese. They start preparing. They start stretching. Even the games that the Americans were dominant, or the Russians, yeah, the Eastern Europe were do, uh, dominant. Gymnastics and the rest, Bulgaria, Poland, and the rest. The Chinese are not doing it. So well. Synchronization. Did a game. So why are we not doing it? Not that we don't have those uh, people around. So but let, 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 let's, um, Doctor. I'm not interested. Doctor Martin. It's a very critical um, um, yes. topic that we're talking about, something that concerns the future of our youth. And definitely, I'm more that uh, you'll be so passionate about it. And I'll be so much um, worried by the situations. And I like a lot of Nigerians are there, and even Africans are watching us, that we want to be sincere with ourselves. We want to make things where it should be. We just want a week of um, jamboree, like you called it. Now, let's ask them um, this very important question. The Delta State government, governor, we were representing the people of Delta, in his speech said that there should be, the, the, the restriction should be 17 downwards, not 15 downwards. That means you should be having any other um, athletes from 17, 16, 15 downwards to participate. While the standard right now, even in this sport festival going on in Asaba, is 15. Will a change of date, will a change of age change anything in what this is all about? 
No, 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 no. It has nothing to do. Rather, if you have a, a regular talent that is 15, it's not left for you to nurture him hmm. or her. What will be the best interest? We ensure he goes to school. The, the nutrition. Hmm. What are our athletes eating? Fufu and apple, carbohydrates. What are they eating? Those ones who are now doing those uh, energy sapping things, what is the technicality that they need to upgrade? Hmm. How am I sure they are still paying their schools within the time that they will continue when we are putting them an, an eye? Hmm. Are they only good to be used and dumped? Hmm. Then when it comes to selecting for national team, the reference letters start coming from left and right. By now, we should be able to have data. Of course, data that... which are not hidden data, data that can be highly verifiable data. In athletes in Javelin, under 15, we have so 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 five people from Delta, we have three from Kano, we have four for Sokoto. In cycling, we have three from Borono, we have two from Castina, we have this. This data, then how do you upgrade? How do you keep on monitoring them in terms of male and female? At what age? Hmm. Female, they are reaching the age of uh, property and the rest. But they are menstrual cycle and the rest. How do we engage and help them that this swing does not affect them in terms of event? These are all the elements. And, and also, what we... And we, the body, which environment is this thing? Okay, Dr. Martin, we also know that, just hear your opinion before we go on this report, uh, the opinion on the very fact that when this game started, it started in, um, I think, in Abuja, the first edition, before it was taken to um, University of Illori. University of Illori, it had about four or five editions, was held in um, University of Illori. And now it has been announced yesterday by the sport minister, who I believe is your friend, uh, said that um, the eight that the that Delta State government, Delta State itself, will host it for the f next five years. And to analysis and report, that's what we saw. It does not give um, any other states a time to prepare. Well, why do you have to give a particular state, like the University of Illinois LD for almost four or five or six years, if I'm right, and um, now we have Delta going to host it for the next five years. Don't you think that will be not every distribution of sport development because that's the biggest sport event in the country in youth segments and um, next to the National Sport Festival. Don't you think it's appropriate if a state, at least at least it's two years, to stabilize things, it is go to another state and the state also make sure that because the only time some governments and some states and governors pay attention for sport is when they are hosting events like that. What's your opinion on this? Well, for me, I think uh, this level of, is it a concession policy, which to me, I don't think uh, will be very good, like what you said. We should have had a rotational program for each state. If possible, each state should rotate so that the facility, like you said, will have been improved or, or, or renovated or start thinking. So each state will not think that this is what I'm... Then I'm not looking maybe the issue of security. Security issue is prone to everywhere. But mm -hmm. I am very certain that if you are able to do that, giving data still the right for five years, for me, it's a cheap popularity that is not helping other states. And a time will come, most of the states will not participate again because they will feel that, why am I away participating in Delta? For instance, if you say Delta states in five years, okay, Delta have hosted twice or whatever. Okay, let's shift to River State or let's shift to Cross River, or let's shift to any of these things, you will tell me about security. But I am very, very certain that sports as a unifying factor is a tool for us to spread and develop our facility. We are talking about facility. The whole of this country, it is only Uyo, Gospel, like Bible Stadium that we have that mm -hmm. is fit for calf games. That, that should tell you something, that there's something wrong somewhere. So we cannot... Partic uh, be participating in sport without developing our facility. Tomorrow, we start crying that we're supposed to go to abroad, we're supposed to go there. If you understand the pattern in other uh, what is happening last week, they do zonal events. It rotates, it goes from one point to another point, one zone to another point. That gives you the easy sense of belonging. That gives you that, like you said, the reawakening that, yes, I need to put this facility 
in place. The state governor and the state commissioner will work in tandem with the federal government to say that we need to put this in time. We need to improve the security situation in this place. And that would have been another way of putting it. So giving that concession to Delta State, for me, maybe it's a political statement, but uh, it's not, for me, it's not too positive to my thinking. Yes, um, we, we still have you with us. That uh, we have been speaking with Dr. Martin Morgan. We still have you. Don't go anywhere, um, Dr. Martin. We won't just um, Nigerians um, and Africans um, across um, the continent and those are watching us from um, all devices to have a report um, we made on the eight national youth games. And when we come back, we'll still continue speaking to you as we are going to round up the program with you. But let's take our viewers to um, a report we made, which started yesterday. Many um, states came. For that, so enjoy the um, report on the eight national U games that took started at Asaba, the Stephen Keshi Stadium yesterday. Ceremony of the eight national youth games over in Asaba Delta State was held on Thursday at the main ball of Stephen Keshi Stadium. Of an exciting ceremony saw contingents of the participating states, including the Federal Capital Territory, taking part in the match past followed by oath from athletes and officials pledging to abide by the rules of the Games. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, represented by the Minister of Sports Development, Senator John Enner, said the National Youth Games is devoted to the talent anthem, noting that the focus on grassroots sports development is key to boosting the sector. We are truly committed and dedicated The youth games will continue and are added as a nurturing ground for sport, blaming the decline of sports in the country. He, however, blamed aging of athletes, assuring that coaches are on the ground to discover athletes. <laughs> Remarks. The Delta State Governor, Wright Honorary Sheriff of Borough, commended the Federal Ministry of Sports Development for their continuing organization and appeal that the National Youth Games be reverted to National Championship for under 15 to under 17 athletes.
Thousand athletes and over 1,000 officials have converged in Nasaba State. Take two, have converged in Nasaba for the ongoing games. This year's attendance is a record number for the annual fiesta, as the eighth edition of the National Youth Games is scheduled to end with the closing ceremony being Friday, September the 19th. <laughs> Opening ceremony of the eighth National Youth Games. Interesting moments from um, the National Youth um, Games in Asaba. Uh, we want to say a big thank you for keeping on with us. And uh, what, what, what can you say in uh, regards to um, what, what we've heard so far about um, a lot of almost 60, 6,000, and many kids also from across um, the, the, the state? What, what can you say about that? What do you wish them? Honestly, I think uh, uh, I think uh, like what the Minister of Sports, uh, Senator John Owen and all have said, even the governor, we can see a lot of improvement and trying to work out the modalities how we can be able to get it uh, better. What we'll stop off from uh, say fine, if you look at that age, we can still divide that category into two. And start seeing that other states can still sponsor and take the example of Delta State mm. so that we can have a synergy at the end of the day when we are getting, so you graduate from that particular age to another age competition so that we can run see just like what is sustainable like in France and in Spain under 15 is there then when you move you move on this we call it minim we have what we call in French in the France set we have the cadet we have the minim we have senim senim minim then we have the senior which is the big one the senior one so these are the category of what I think is that if Delta State voluntarily are taking it we can also see another state and not just stop two states who are are joining to join and, and organize themselves and see. So these are the things we are talking about sport development. It must not be the sole unit of a particular state. For instance, we see uh, Delta. We used to know that old Bender they used to be known for sports. If you remember the Bender state of those days, which is and uh, we used to be known that most of the sporting activity used to go. I mean, the school sport, a dog polo school, a cowboys high school. 
They are all from the day in Benin. We know them very well. And even in, in Nuga, you know how Uniben used to be very strong then in those days. They've seen a woman as our team captain. So these are the issues we should be able to now understand that yeah, we can reshape it and graduate the same way, like the way the Americans are doing. That is why, like I keep on telling you that the last Olympic, more than 300 medals were won from university graduates. So this is what is telling you that we, we can change. Good thinking, but the implementations are not always what we get. So we can realign and reformat what suits us. Every state in this country is blessed with a particular group of talent in each case. Even the physical challenge, we can angry because we are aging. Whether we like it or not, our sports is an intensive care unit. It's an emergency situation we need to declare for our sport. In all our talk. let us not be overtaken by the fury of the super egos again, Benin Republic. Our sport is not what ought to be at this stage. We should not be having sleepless night playing Benin Republic or Rwanda. At this point in time, there's something that we need to really understand. If, they, if the administrators are bellied of idea, let's pull them away and get other people into the system and let's work. Up to now, we don't even know what's happening in the Federation. That long story of uh, interference that the Federation is calling, for me, it's just a softer feature to use it to disturb what ought to be. But when they are sharing money, there's no interference. My parting shot. Yeah, thank you. Sport, yeah, thank you very game. much, um, Dr. Martin Morgan. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we hope that uh, yeah. we'll be talking to you in the nearest future because your expert opinion and objectivity is always um, applauded by viewers watching us from across um, the continent. Thank you very much, Dr. Martin Morgan. Yeah, thank you. And also for our viewers in other country, I say thank you. Merci beaucoup et au revoir. Yeah. Okay, we've been speaking with um, Dr. Martin Morgan. Uh, if you're just joining us, we started with the Nigerian Football Federation, Austin Iguavo, and um, the search for foreign coaches. Also, we now talk about the eight national youth games that um, started yesterday in the National um, in Asaba. And let's also not forget that um, it's been an interesting moment um, on the show, speaking about what the future holds. And let's not forget, if you want to be part of the show, you can join us on all our social media platform. You can join us on our X account. Not forgetting Facebook and Instagram for you to get the best in the world of sport. I'm Muda Shishitu. Same time next week, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sport. Bye for now. <laughs>